In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Proxmox and run your first VM. We're installing Proxmox on one of these HP mini PCs that I have here. It has a Core i5 6 core, it has 16 gigs of RAM, and it has a 500 gig NVMe SSD. These are great for home lab because of their small form factor and they're very power efficient. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing that I did is I created a bootable USB key. I'm pretty sure you already know how to do this. It's very simple. And I boot it into the Proxmox installation. So let's start the installation. Uh, we're going to do the graphical installation. It's going to be easier. Honestly, the installation of Proxmox is made very easy, so it's very easy to follow. Okay, so let's go through the steps. First thing we're going to do is we're going to accept the user license agreement. We're going to click on I agree. All right, so here's where we are going to select our Proxmox hard drive. In this case, there's only one drive in this machine. It's a 500 gig NVMe, so that's the one we're going to select. We can click on options to, to have more advanced options about the file system and the type of uh, partitions that we want. But here it's fairly safe to just leave it by default. You can choose ext4 or XFS. In this case, I'm going to go with ext4, which is the default for Proxmox. So we're going to click on OK. Then we'll click on Next. OK, so here's going to ask you for your country. In this case, mine is Canada. Perfect. So we choose Canada. And then for the time zone, we're just going to choose Toronto. In this case, for you, you just choose the one that is closer to you or your time zone. Uh, keyboard layout English US, that should be fine. And then we click on next. All right, so this is going to be the password for the root user. So just create a strong password and that's it. For email, in, you don't really need to put an uh, actual email, but you can just, if you want, you can put your personal email. I'm just going to put something uh, random, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we click on next. Okay, so this is going to be the fully qualified domain of uh, domain name of your Proxmox environment. So here we need to put an actual FQDN. So I'm going to name this PVE01 and we can just put dot, it can literally be anything. This is going to be your network configuration. So this has to be the subnet that you use at home. In my case is 192.168.0. Uh, but it depends on you. It could be dot one or if you have something custom at home, this is where you need to put your uh, subnet. This is going to be also the IP that your host is going to use. And by doing this, we're setting a, a manual IP. So don't worry about any DHCP or anything like that. So I'm going to do zero. I'm going to give it the IP of 11. And then the gateway is 0 0.1. For DNS server, I'm just going to put the default Google DNS, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And then we can click on next. Okay, so this is the, the summary of your installation. We're doing a file system of ext3. Our NVMe is slash dev NVMe 0. And one country Canada, America, Toronto. Your keyboard layout is US. Your email, the network interface, the name of your host, and then the static IP that you want for your host. So let's install Proxmox. Okay, so here we just have to wait. And when the installation is done, we will jump into the web UI. Okay, so Proxmox is installed and it's going to automatically reboot for you. Okay, so Proxmox is installed and as you can see, we are just, it just displays the terminal, but now we can connect via the web UI. So let's do that now. Now that our machine is booted up, we can go into our browser and type the IP that we previously set up on the installation. In this case is 192.168.0.11 followed by the port 8006. Press enter. You're going to get a warning like this. This is because we haven't set up any SSL certificates. So yes, your connection is not private, but this nothing to be concerned of. We just click on advance and we click on proceed on safely. Okay, so now we have the login screen from Proxmox. If you're here, it means that the installation was successful and then you have a Proxmox environment up and running. So let's log in uh, for this account is the root account and the password that we set up on the installation. In this case, it's root, and then you just type your password. You're gonna get a warning like this because we're not using a subscription from Proxmox. We're gonna use the community edition instead. So you don't need to worry about it. So you can click on okay, and it's going to go away. The first thing that you want to do when you install Proxmox is enable the community repo so that we can update all our packages and our environments. To do that, we're going to click on PVE1, which is our node, and then we're going to click on the shell. Okay, so this is the actual shell from the machine, from the Debian machine that Proxmox is running on. So we're going to navigate it to cd slash etsy apt uh, sources list.d. Here you're going to find two files. 
So we're going to edit the first one, which is the Ceph repo. We're going to use nano for this and we're going to add a comment. Well, more like a hashtag just to comment it out. We're going to press control O to write the changes and control X to exit. We're going to do the same for the PVE enterprise. So nano PVE enterprise dot list. We're going to add a hashtag again, and then we're going to enable the community repo in your case. This one might not be there by default. I already pre-prepared it for, for you guys, but you can just copy the, the exact text. I'm going to put this in the description below so you can just copy and paste it or just for reference. Okay, so now we're going to save. So Control O to write the file and Control X to exit. We're going to do a clear to clear our terminal. And now we're going to do an APT update. APT update. Oops. Okay. Perfect. So it says that it has 65 packages that it can be upgraded. So we're going to do an APT upgrade now. Perfect. We're going to say yes to this. And this is going to install the latest Debian security patches, the latest Debian packages, and it's also going to install all the latest packages from Proxmox. So we just need to wait for this to finish. After this, we're going to reboot our server and then we're going to proceed with the creation of your first VM. Okay, so the installation, the update is done. Now we're just going to reboot the node. We just need to type reboot. Okay, so the machine is pinging again, so it, it means that it's back. Now let's refresh our browser. So everything is back. We're connected. We're running the latest version. Now it's time to run our first VM. We're going to click on PV01. We can check the summary just to see a couple of things about our node. To be able to create our VM, first we need to upload our ISO file of the OS that we want to install. We're going to click on local PVE01. And you can see you have a ISO images menu here. You can click on it and then we're going to click on upload. We're going to select file. I'm going to go to my desktop. And in this case, I am installing Rocky 9.2. So that's why I'm uploading the Rocky 9 minimal ISO. So we can just click on upload and just wait for the upload to be done. Okay. So as you can see the task completed. So our ISO is now in our virtualization node. So now we can exit from here. We have one ISO, perfect. So now let's install the VM. We can click on our node PVE01, and then we're going to click on create VM. I like to have always the advanced options just to see all the options that I can use. So I'm going to click advanced here by default. The node that we want to use is node one. We only have one VM ID. We can put whatever number you want. I'm going to leave it as hundred, which is the default. This is going to be the name of your VM. So I'm just going to type Rocky server. For example, now we can click on next. Here's where we're going to select our ISO file that we previously uploaded. We're going to select Rocky 9.2 for the VM type. We're doing Linux. So you choose, we're choosing Linux, but if you wanted to do windows or something else, you can choose windows. In this case, it's, just, it's a Rocky nine. So it's Linux and the version. Well, the version is just any kernel from the kernel 2.6 to six. And now we're going to click on next. Okay. So these are very important settings for our VM. The graphics card, I'm going to choose VirtIO GPU. This is compatible with Linux automatically because all the VirtIO drivers are in the kernel. If you were using something like Windows or something else, I would suggest you just to leave this on default. Now the machine type by default is going to set your uh, machine with a BIOS instead of UEFI. BIOS is just the old version and UEFI is the new version. So we're going to go with UEFI just to keep everything up to date. And we're going to choose Q35 as the machine. And for the BIOS, we're going to choose UEFI. Now it's going to ask you for an EFI storage. You can just choose your local drive, which is fine. This is just to store a little bit of data for the UEFI image. Anything else from here, we don't need to change. Ice Virtio, Ice Cosy Single should be fine. We're going to click on next. Now this is where we're going to set up your disk image or your virtual hard drive. For this, I like to choose Virtio Block. If you're using Linux, this is the, the option that is going to give you the best performance. If you're using Windows or something else, I suggest you either use SATA or SCSI because Virt.io drivers are not by default on Windows. There's ways to install it, but for this tutorial, we're going to use Virt.io block and a Linux VM. The storage location is going to be again, our local VM, well, our local storage. And for the size, I like to give it a little bit more than 32. I'm going to give it 50 gigs. And the rest of the options, we can leave them by default. Now we can click on next. So here we're going to configure the CPU. The CPU, uh, we, we just want one socket. It should be fine. I'm going to give it four cores. And for the type, I'm going to choose 
a very specific one, which is the host. What the type of host means is that the VM is going to run on the host CPU, whatever CPU you have on your host machine. In this case, it's a Core i5-6 core, just going to pass through the, the task to your CPU. There's no need for extra layer of emulation. This is the option that is going to give you the best performance. So that's why I always use host or host pass through. Anything else here uh, of the advanced options, we really don't need it for this tutorial. So we're just gonna click on next. Now here's the amount of RAM that you want to give to this VM. We're going to choose a little bit more than two gigs. We're gonna go for four. So it's 496 for four gigs of RAM. We're gonna click on next. And here is also where we're going to set up our network. Now we're going to set up uh, just a bridge network, meaning that uh, the VM is going to connect to the bridge network of Proxmox. This will enable your VM to have the same IP as your home network. For the model, I'm going to use again Virt.io Para Virtualize. This is also baked into the kernel, the driver. So this is perfect for Linux. If you were using something like Windows or uh, another type of OS, I would suggest you use something else like the Intel version here or the Realty tech version, the Windows image already has those drivers. So there's no additional drivers to install. But since we're doing Linux, we're going to use Virtio and we're going to click on next. This is just a summary of your VM. So it's everything that we selected. Everything looks in order. So we're just going to click on finish and our VM is ready. So if we click here, we can see that our VM is ready to go. Now we can click on console and we're going to click on start now. This is going to boot up the VM. Okay, so it's booting up. And as we can see, we have installed Rocky 9. So we're just going to go quickly through the installation of the VM. So we just press install Rocky 9. Okay, so as you can see, we are in the Rocky 9 installation. So we're just going to go really quickly through it. English, continue. I'm pretty sure you already know how to install Linux, so it shouldn't be too hard for you. Uh, we're going to choose our root installation. Minimal install, that's perfect. For the disk drive, we're just going to do automatic partitioning and we should be good to go. So we're just gonna click on begin installation and your VM is going to be installed. We just need to wait a little bit for this to finish and we're going to be able to log in into our VM. Okay, so the installation is done. We're now just going to click on reboot system. And this is going to reboot our VM. Okay, so now that our VM has rebooted, now we can connect with root and our password, perfect. Just to check for the network. And as you can see, we have an IP on our home subnet. So our VM is connected to the internet. We are good to go. So now with this, we have a Proxmox virtual environment set up at home and you already run your first VM. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Leave any questions or suggestions in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one.